Hello friends, welcome back to our channel DS Tech Mirror. In today's video, we will see how we can get data from Power BI dataset to Power Apps. So what we will do, we will display data from our Power BI dataset into Power Apps gallery and for that we can use Power Apps collection. But we will see how we can establish connection between Power Apps and Power BI and how we can read that Power BI dataset. But before I proceed further, I will try to explain you what is Power BI dataset and other stuff required for this particular video because I cannot go into much detail that would be the outside the scope of this particular video. So let's get started. These are the steps which I am going to follow for this uh, particular video. So the high level steps would be I am going to create one Power Automate flow. There is an action in the Power Automate flow that is run a query against a uh, Power BI data set. So I will use that particular action. That action will give me the data which is required although I have to write some DAX query inside that particular action. So I will explain you a bit about DAX query. I will share you the link in case you are writing some DAX query that will help you. You can find that link in the description box below as well. I will come to that. Then we will see we have to do some processing uh, before we send back that particular data back to Power Apps. And to respond to Power Apps, I'm going to use the action respond to Power Apps because uh, this is not the premium action and uh, we can, uh, this is available with our regular M365 license that is a shaded license. There is another action which you can use that is the premium action called response which you can use to send uh, data back to Power Apps. I am going to call this Power Automate flow from Power Apps and after that we are going to display this data into Power Apps gallery and in Power Apps also. We have to do some processing. We have to do some data formatting before it can be stored in a collection and display in Power Apps gallery. So this would be the uh, overall steps which we are going to follow in today's video. Now I will move to my M365. I have all the tabs open with me here. I am to create, create one Power Automate flow. Then I will create one sample canvas app. Uh, the, the thing would be there in that canvas app. I will just simply show you how you can display data, how you can read data. And here is my Power BI. And here you can see this. Uh, there is one workspace over here. And I'm going to read this data set sales and return sample. This is the data set which I'm going to read. If I click on this data set, you can see there are various tables in this data set. So, uh, we can read any of the table. Uh, today I am going to read this customer table. By the end of this video, you will come to know you can read any of the tables from this data set. If you are not from the Power BI background and confused what is Power BI data set, so just to give you a brief idea about it, uh, this is my Power BI desktop. Using Power BI desktop, uh, I can load my data into it. I can load Excel or there are multiple data sources supported by uh, Power BI desktop. Again, I won't go into much detail because that is outside the scope of this particular video. So as a brief, you can understand I have loaded some Excel uh, data from Excel into this Power BI desktop. Then using this publish button, I have published it to the Power BI service. Because if it is in the Power BI desktop, I cannot share it with uh, other people in the organization. Only I can see it. So to share it with others, what I have to do, I have to publish it. So once I publish it to one, one of the workspace, this data becomes available over here. And now we will see how we can read this data because there are multiple scenarios where one team is working with some data set and creating some reports which are shared within the organization. Now another team wants to need some data. And you know, when we work with this Power BI data, we do some transformation, heavy transformation. So just to avoid that rework, another team can directly read this data set into Power Apps or into Power Automate. So how we can do that, that is the main agenda of today's video. So before I proceed further, I'll close this Power BI desktop. And now let's start following these steps, which I mentioned in my slide. First is I have to create one Power Automate flow. So what I will do, I'll go and create one automated cloud flow. I will name is uh, DS Tech Mirror and then name of the flow would be get data from Power BI. This would be the name of my flow. 
because I have to call this flow from power apps I will be using the power apps trigger if I select this power apps over here I can see these two triggers so power apps v2 I will select fine this would be my trigger next is I will be using this action called run a query against a data set so I have to read the data from power bi so let's see what is available with for power bi if I type power bi I can see there are multiple actions add a node to check in row to data set so multiple action related to uh, power bi as well as for the data set but I want to read some data or all the data from the power bi data set for that I have to run some query and for that I have an action called run a query against a data set if I go for further explanation you can see use the power bi rest api to run a query so I will select this now over here I have to select the workspace now workspace over here is if I go to workspaces where it is present it is present inside my workspace power bi my workspace so workspace you can understand it's a segregated you know uh, places sandbox solution where we put various power bi reports and power bi data set so it is present inside my workspace so what I will do I will select the workspace from here my workspace data set name right now I have only one data set and only one workspace so it, it is pretty easy for me to write this to select this now I have to write this query text because you can see there are multiple tables which are available and inside the table there are multiple columns there could be millions of record in one tables so based on my requirement I have to write a query over here and that query will work behind the scene to fetch the data this you can understand these queries would be you know somewhat similar to camel query or SQL query and if you want to get into the details you can go through this link it is also present in the description box below so there are various decks query this is data analysis query so you can just go through this tutorial and based on your requirement you have to you know write your queries again this is outside the scope for this particular video but I will explain you the query which I am going to write over here so I, I will as, as I said I will query my customer table so what I will say you can see this there is one function called evaluate and what it will do the moment I'll say evaluate internet sales that is the table name it will return all the rows and columns right so I will use this evaluate function I'll write evaluate and after evaluate because uh, as there are large number of records in my table so what I will do I'll say I want to fetch only the top 10 records I will say top n records so I will type top n and then bracket I want to read only the top 10 records for the complete syntax if you are writing this at your end you can search over here and then you can go through this this you will give the you know complete understanding what you have to do in, uh, what are the various parameters related to this top uh, n underscore values number of rows then table name order by expression and the order so what I will say what I will do I will write top 10 and the table name and table name is customer so these would be my table uh, name and just to make it more simple for this particular video because again there are large number of columns I will also select some few columns I will not uh, go by you know by fetching multiple columns so what I will do here I will say select columns this is by select column bracket and top 10 will give me some records uh, from customer table and from here I am saying give me these columns and here I have to mention which column I want okay and again for more understanding I will say select column over here you can see table name name the name given to the column and expression any expression that returns a scalar value like a range integer or string value and here there are some certain examples also over here so what I am saying is give me these two columns country and state 
these two uh, the name which i am uh, you know these two columns i want country and state from my table and this is the name which i want to give once the data is written if i give a and b so this will uh, header will come as a and b so this is the uh, overall syntax for this particular function i'll go back and say select okay now let's see which column we want to fetch i will go to my data set and i'll go to the customer table and from customer table i want to get i have id gender product okay so i will go by id column and product column these two column i will try to select so i'll say within one quotes i can put these two column i'll say id comma product and then i have to give the name of the column which is present in my table inside the square brackets and i will copy it from here and then i can replace the column name over there in case if you are facing some difficulty in viewing this i will try to increase the zoom size for this particular query and here i will say id and here i will say product okay so this is my query once we will run this query then we will see whether it is working or not so before proceeding further what i will do i will first uh, test this query because this is the uh, base of this particular video our query should run now test i'll say manually and i can see my query is working absolutely fine and this is the result which i am getting id and product and this is the way i am getting my result now we will try to format this query a bit because these two columns are coming in the same uh, row so what we will do we will try to format this so for what for that what i will do i'll edit this query and so these are my headers and these are my actual columns so let me try one thing i'll cut this and i will paste it after this particular column header actual column then product would be my header in double quotes and yes i will remove this i have to make sure that i do not make any syntax error and it seems that i am good id actual column product and actual column so let's see if this will work and yes pro ran successfully and i think it looks good this is the correct json format in which we are getting the data this is the id this is the product id product and this is the top 10 records fine so let's proceed further now now we have to do some processing before and let me add one more action at the end we have to send back this data to the power apps for that i will use this section called respond to power apps power apps and respond to power apps or flow and so in between this run a query against a data set and respond to power app or flow we have to do certain processing let's see what we need to do so let's start uh, creating a variable i'll say initialize variable and i will name this variable as we are customer records this would be of type string or well, let's take it as an array and here i will say first table rows this is the result which i am getting query results as an array of rows and let me just take it as a string the reason is because this response which i will send it to power apps it accept text boolean file it does not accept as an array format so i have to select string over here i passed it here now let me use this compose action i will pass this operator over here we are customer record and say 
let's say this uh, final or uh, what we can say customer records fine and I can pass this variable we are customer records now I will save run and I will show you something we need to do one more step before we can start working on our power apps run this fine now notice one thing over here because we have not done anything here and if I go to the compose action what output it is giving me all these headers are coming in square brackets and this will happen automatically whenever I'm going to you know fetch data from power bi data set because these are the headers uh, these are the headers which I gave so over at the top if I go the headers which I gave were ID in double quotes. This is the actual column name which I have to fetch from the Power BI data set. So this was the syntax. But automatically this action or what it will do if I see over here automatically what it will give it will give me in square brackets. So while you know when I will process this JSON data in my Power Apps I won't be able to do. I have to get rid of the square brackets first. Then only I can do this processing. For that what I have to do is I have to run one expression called replace okay and in the replace let me get rid of this expression replace okay I have to select the string text it is VR customer record now in this VR customer record what I have to replace I have to replace this ID which is in double quotes this one with without double quotes this id fine and then what i have to do i will write one more replace function outside it because the output of the first function i will then i will remove the another one that is the product so i'll say remove this product and just give me product I have make one small mistake I will rectify it I will show you this replace function on notepad as well so that you can understand it much better but first let let me just write it so this is fine and let's see if it is working I have to close my replace function I will copy it and I'll say okay fine and first let's see if it is working then I will explain you over here this is my replace function I will explain you again I'll run this automatically with the recently used trigger save and test flow ran successfully we want to see the output if we are getting the desired output now we and you know we can see we got rid of, uh, rid of those square brackets so this is the normal JSON which we have now we can do the pass JSON in my power apps now I will explain you this uh, replace function so what I have done I have used this replace this is the variable I am saying remove this ID with square brackets give me the normal ID and then this is the output of my first replace function I put one more replace function on this now I am saying now from this output replace this product and put this product as well replace this product with this product and this would be my final formula which I have put and now this will return the output to the Power apps. So we are done from the power automate side. Now let's go to this power apps. I will quickly create one power apps blank app and I will say again DS tech mirror and I'll say power bi data set. Fine. Create. Over here quickly uh, what I will do I will insert one gallery this would be my gallery okay and I will put one button on you know on button click or button select function I will be writing calling my power automate flow this is would be my button so this is also fine now what I will do, let me see if I can call this flow 
run a query against a data set too this is my flow name that's perfectly fine let's see what is my flow name run a query against a data set too this is my flow name and i will add this now this is also done on button click i have to call my power automate flow i'll say power apps run a query against a data set to run and what it will do this will give me the data and i will collect this data in a variable for now and let's analyze what we will get so i'll use set variable i'll say we are again i will use the same variable we are customer cards and this is done for now we will leave this uh, gallery as it is and i will just for the sake of simplicity i will rename my button and i'll say invoke flow that's it and now i have two option how i can uh, call this flow i can click on this play button and i can click on this button or other ways i will press alt key in my keyboard and this screen will go into preview mode and i would be able to do it from here as well so i'll prefer this uh, mode of operation you can choose your preferred way so i'll click on my alt key and i'll click on invoke flow so you can see this processing going on okay let's see what is there in the customer records i can see this data is appearing now we have to format this data i cannot uh, you know allocate or i cannot put this data directly into some collection or to my gallery i have to do the processing but another thing is uh, which is a bit of a worry for me still i can see this square bracket so i will see what uh, if anything needs to be done because otherwise i won't be able to uh, pass this json so let's proceed further now with power apps so friends this is how we are going to call our flow again i will invoke this flow and we'll see the data format which is coming and it has these square brackets which will give us trouble and let let me do one thing let me show you the issue as well and then i'll go back to my power automate flow because i know what i have done see what i have done i am directly passing this variable i am not passing the output of this compose action i have to pass this action over here then only uh that formatting or formatted data will get written and now it got resolved say and now this should work over here okay now what i will do i'll write my next piece of code i have now this is a array of object what i have to do i have to iterate it over so i'll use overall sorry for all inside this i will use my table function table then i have to pass this json so pass json is a feature for which you know let me show you you have to go to your settings and if it is not available it is in upcoming feature list it is in preview mode and you have to enable it so you can see pass json so once you will enable this feature then only you can use it this is pass json we will go back to our code and inside this pass json what i will do i will write this we are customer records and now what we will do we will just now over here i'll come outside this table and inside this for all loop i have to put all these values inside a collection for that i will declare a collection over here i'll say collect and collection name would be c o double l data will give and over here i will be using this so i'll say id and i'll say this record dot value dot id first we will go with one column and then we will see how i can put uh my other column as well in my collection and then i will map this collection with my gallery so this is my overall approach let's see what is the error over here pass json has some invalid argument overall i can see the pass json has some invalid argument 
expecting a text value instead so let's see the type for this particular value it is of type record and dot run dot customer record because from this particular flow i am you know returning this customer record now my error got resolved click on format text and let's see invoke flow and we will see what is there in my collection now call data i'll double click and over here i cannot see this is uh, the default uh, way of displaying data in power apps if you are you know uh, getting a response from this power automate and pass json so this i will ignore but what i will do i will go to this gallery and inside this gallery i will do certain formatting i will remove this separator arrow image title and subtitle i will keep for now and in the title first i will go to the gallery and in the items i will say call data now i map my collection in the title i will say this item dot id i will get rid of this x axis these are some inbuilt formulas then width i will type some hard coding for now and you can see i can see the width so i can see the id so all these ids are coming and now I, I i have to see how i can get the product also so for that again i will go back to my this button invoke flow i will expand this code i will put comma over here and i'll say after id product comma this record dot value dot now let's say product format text or i'll press alt and i will click on invoke flow go to sub subtitle this item dot product and this is done so guys this is how you can fetch data from power bi data set to your power apps you can see if i press uh, alt in my keyboard i can scroll through this gallery as well and if i go to play mode this also works so this is what we have learned in today's video and that was the agenda let me uh, give you a quick recap and then we'll close for today so i'll go back to my slide so this is what we have discussed we will create one power automate flow so over here we created one power automate flow we have used this section called run a query against a data set then i explained you about a brief what is data set and how you can use dex query to query your data set if you want to learn in detail about this data set and uh, dex query uh, i have shared the link in the description box below you can refer that then once this data is available i can send it to power apps but uh, as i said it uh, the headers are available with the square bracket so we have to get rid of that otherwise we are going to face issue over here in this pass json so for that what i have done i have used this replace function and using replace function i remove the square brackets and then i the output of this compose function i return back to power apps in the power apps i added one gallery and a button on button click i call this power automate flow after this what i did because this is an array of array so i have to loop through it i have used for all function inside this for all function then i use this parse json you have to enable this feature because this is an experimental experimental mode still still not general availability is still not there so you have to enable it once you will enable it this would be available parse json over here i have uh, passed the output of this particular power automate flow do not forget to use this dot operator and select the output which you have sent for this particular variable using this section respond to power apps or flow once this is done just use a collection and just iterate through your record and put it into a collection pass this collection to a gallery in items and then it is easily available to use in your gallery the way you want to use it you can use if you now over here it's up to your capability to write your dex query you can query any table all the table if you want to query the entire table with all the rows and columns that is also available if you want to do some formatting over it you have to do it using the dex query and dex query is a totally separate topic but if you want to write some basic query 
the link which I have shared is more than enough. If you will just go through it, that will definitely help you out. So guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to get more updates from the Office 365 world. You can also follow me on Twitter and also you can join this group called Modern SharePoint over Facebook where we can coordinate. If you have any issue related to this video or any of my previous video, you can reach out to me through YouTube comments as well or through our official email ID that is contact at gmail.com. Thank you. Much love. Keep learning.